Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about Presence of bodies of water. This will be the fourth quarter topic and learning competency number 11. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to describe the characteristics and movement patterns of sea breezes and land breezes The second one is to explain the occurrences of land breezes and sea breezes And the third one is to appreciate the rule of the sea breezes and the land breezes play in moderating temperatures and creating pleasant microclimates in coastal regions by answering the reflection of learning. In activating the prior knowledge for the short review, the students will instruct to identify the sea breeze and the land breeze. In establishing purpose of the lesson for unlocking of content vocabulary, the students will answer the match type activity. The earth is spherical shape and its tilted axis cause solar radiation to strike different parts of the planet at varying angles. The equator receives direct sunlight while higher latitudes experience more oblique angles. Regions near the equator receive more concentrated solar energy resulting in warmer temperatures. Higher latitudes receive less concentrated energy leading to cooler temperatures. The following are the importance of water bodies and land masses. So for the water bodies, oceans, lakes, and rivers cover a significant portion of the Earth's surface, absorbing and releasing heat more slowly than land masses. While the land masses, these are the continents and islands that are characteristic by a faster heating and cooling rate due to their lower thermal capacity and this leads to greater temperature fluctuations. The following are the thermal properties of land and water. So the first one is the water's high specific heat. Water has a higher specific heat capacity than land and requiring more energy to rise its temperature. This property allows water to store heat energy more efficiently. And the second one is land's low specific heat. So land heats up and cools down more quickly than water due to its lower specific heat capacity. This leads to significant temperature swings throughout the day. The following are the daytime heating and cooling of land and water. So the first one is the daytime heating. So during the day, land heats up faster than water, creating a temperature difference between the two. The second one is the evening cooling. So as the sun sets, land cools down more rapidly than water, leading to a reversal in temperature differences. The following are the formation of land and sea breezes. So the first one is daytime sea breeze. So the warmer land creates a low pressure zone drawing in cooler air from the ocean resulting in a sea breeze. The second one is the nighttime land breeze. So as land cools down, the cooler air creates a high pressure zone pushing air towards the warmer ocean, resulting in a land breeze. 
The following are the impacts of land and sea breezes. So the first one is the marine navigation. So land and sea breezes influence sailing routes and coastal navigation by providing predictable wind patterns. The second one is the cloud formation. So rising air associated with land breezes can lead to the cloud formation and potential precipitation. The following are the relevance to weather and climate patterns. So the first one is the local weather variations. Land and sea breezes contribute to local weather variation, influencing temperature, humidity, and precipitation patterns. The second one is the coastal climate moderation. So the presence of large bodies of water helps moderate coastal climates, reducing temperature extremes. And the third one is the global climate regulation. On the larger scale, the interaction of land and water bodies plays a crucial role in regulating a global climate patterns. For the lesson activity, ask the learners to read the scenario and complete the Venn diagram below to differentiate between sea breeze and land breeze. In making of generalization for the learners' takeaways, the students will use the KWL chart and they are going to use the graphic organizer to answer the L column or what they have learned about the lesson. And for the reflection on learning, the students will answer the following questions.